Hi guys, uh, welcome back. Uh, didn't get a video out last week. Um, I just uh, I didn't have the content to produce. I've still been working on this neck cut. Um, it's it's quite a difficult part. I've got what I think is the diff most difficult part. This scroll here. I've got um, some operate not this this one but this toolpath on this side. Um, I've got everything looking right where I want it to be. So um, I've been able to get the I've been able to get the peg box really nice and smooth. Um, the only problem I've been having is the flutes around this outside edge, so I'm just probably going to have to cut those by hand. Um, not really too big a deal. Um, I actually kind of enjoy scroll carving, so that'll be a, a fun challenge. Um, but for right now, what I'm working on is uh, cutting the F-holes. So normally what I do when I cut F-holes is I actually glue the top to the, to the ribs, and then we sit that in the machine and cut the F-holes out. Um, but there's not really a lot of material to hold the stock to it and I mean in this instrument they're very accurate but what I'm going to do a little bit differently than what I normally do is I'm going to cut the f-holes before I actually glue the top onto the ribs so um, so here's what we have in Fusion 360 I just have made another copy of that uh, top body even with the base bar in there you can see through the model here and um, I created a stock from that the first body that we've already cut out without the f-holes in it and uh, and then I made this trace operation so I'll show you what I've done here I'm using a 1 16th in mill here flat end in mill and uh, these are just my feeds and speeds here um, these tend to work out pretty well for this bit so they're just my standard feeds let me change that to disable I don't need flood coolant <laughs> Um, the geometries are just simply the uh, the f-hole geometries from the top of the instrument. Um, I didn't choose the ones from the bottom of the instrument because you can see here. Let me see if I can get it here. Um, you can see because of the extra material that I had for the corner blocks, that um, that is a little bit goofy shape right there. Now I've cut that material out by hand. So it doesn't exist in the actual model, so we don't have to worry about it too much. But um, to make things look like they cut, or to make things cut more smoothly, um, I went with the geometry on the top. Um, the heights, standard heights. Um, what I've done here is I'm doing a climb milling that puts the bit on the inside of the of the uh, contour. Um, doing a point negative point two inch. Um, axial offset and that uh, that's just the bottom dimension of this cut um, the, I'm doing passes at, at 30 thousandths of an inch I'm gonna do six of those um, and that's pretty much it um, for the operation so I'll show you the simulation for it really quick here here's the simulation so it's pretty just a straightforward outline pass um, does six step downs and that's what it is so I'm gonna get this post processed out and I'm going to set it up the machine and get things set up and we're gonna cut these
Okay, well, um, I'm pretty happy with the way this has turned out. Um, I've got a little bit of finished work on it, but it's pretty much there. Um, I hope you liked it. Um, if you did, please like, please subscribe. Um, the editing is a little choppy on this one, I know. I'm uh, learning uh, Premiere Pro right now, so I'm switching over from Lightworks to Premiere Pro to see if I like that a little bit better. A little bit of learning curve and figuring out how to get to where I was with Lightworks, so. Um, but hopefully I can make even more professional looking videos um, with this software. So uh, let me know what you think. Please like, please subscribe. Um, we have a new Patreon um, contributor, so we'd like to thank them and uh, catch you next time.